In this new section, we're going to take a look at a field of chemistry known as kinetics. This is the study of how fast reactions go. This is known as their rate. Uh, also, what affects how fast they go and what occurs on a molecular level as a reaction occurs. In this first video, we'll revise some material from year 10. What factors can you change about a reaction that will change its rate? So think back to year 10, where you had perhaps your first encounter with rates of reaction. You may have done some experiments where you varied the conditions of a reaction and had a look at whether that made the reaction go faster or slower. As long as you aren't changing the reaction itself, the factors that you can play around with are the concentration of a reactant that's in solution, the pressure if you've got a gaseous reactant, the temperature of the reaction, the surface area if you've got uh, a solid reactant, or if you have two immiscible liquid reactants, so an oil and a water that need to be shaken up together. The surface area between those two has an effect on the rate. And the final thing is the presence of a catalyst. We need to note here that although in most cases changing things like concentration, temperature and so on won't actually change what products are being produced, only how fast they're being produced. But there are examples where this does happen, particularly in organic chemistry, where unwanted side reactions can occur if you don't get the reaction conditions just right. A classic example of a change in products that's easy to replicate in the lab is the reaction between copper and nitric acid, not an organic reaction this one. If you add some copper to dilute nitric acid, one molar for example, then you get copper nitrate produced along with nitrogen mono monoxide gas and water. Nitrogen monoxide is colourless. But if you add the copper to concentrated nitric acid, 15 molar say, then the stoichiometry is different and we get nitrogen dioxide gas as a product. This is a brown toxic gas. Uh, and this is what you can see in the picture here from the Royal Society of Chemistry, the brown nitrogen dioxide gas uh, coming off from the solution. However, in this section, we're less interested in this than we are in the effect of these factors on the speed of a reaction. First, how do these things affect the rate? Well, as you increase the concentration of a reactant, the rate increases. As you increase the pressure of a gaseous reactant, the rate also increases. Note that increasing the pressure of a gas is much the same as increasing the concentration of an aqueous reactant. It just means you have more reactant molecules in a given volume. As you increase the temperature of a reaction, you also increase its rate. If you have a solid reactant, then the more surface area that reactant has, the faster the reaction will go. And this also holds, as I said before, if you have two immiscible liquid reactants like oil and water. And finally, if you add a catalyst, it will also make the reaction go faster. So far, so good. But simply knowing something happens is not what science is all about. We need to go further. First, we'll spend a couple of videos learning how to measure rates of reaction and how to classify reactions based on this information. And then we're going to get into the nitty gritty that is, why and how do these factors affect the rate of a reaction? To get you thinking along the right lines, have a look at these two pictures. On the left is iron powder burning in air in a shower of sparks. This is essentially what you get when you burn a sparkler. On the right is iron, also reacting with the oxygen in air as a car in a field slowly rusts. In both cases, you get the same product, iron 3 oxide. I want you to state which reaction is occurring faster, that's pretty obvious, but then think about why it might be occurring faster. Which factors from our list might be causing the difference in rate in these two cases? See you in class.